Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and uh, uh, welcome back to this next video and this is the third video uh, in the course on the journal genetics uh, in the uh, previous video uh, I've told you about the uh, different definition of genetics uh, and I've told you it's all about the heredity variations and the mechanisms of uh, heredity and variations uh, then uh, I've told you about the genesis of genetics uh, that means the history of the genetics and uh, in this particular video I want to focus on the uh, application of genetics now the uh, application of genetics uh, why are we studying these uh, at the very start of this course is uh, because this is going to lay a foundation that why you should study genetics and why genetics is important and how it can play important role in our lives so uh, let's talk about some of the important application of genetics the first important uh, application of genetics that is selective breeding so what this term uh, selective breeding means uh, selective breeding means that uh, if you have got this bull of the breed a you have cow of a breed b uh, and if you cross them uh, you have selected the breed a and you have selected the uh, breed b from many of the available breeds out there so when you cross them what you can expect in the progeny is that this particular uh, progeny is going to have 50 percent uh, from this particular parent 50 percent from this particular parent and this simply means that good characters from this parent and good character from this parent you are going to get them in a single progeny so this is what you mean by the selective breeding that out of the many bulls out there out of the many cows out there you select the best bull with the uh, properties that you desire and the cow with the properties that you desire and uh, when you cross them you are going to get a progeny that will be uh, you can say a, a merge of these two so this is going to have the uh, good qualities of both of these parents now uh, when you talk about the livestock so in livestock you can uh, do these things by the uh, phenomena of the artificial insemination uh, in vitro fertilization and the embryo transfer now the same concept of the selective breeding is also applicable on uh, plants a and what you can do in plant is that you can uh, cross the uh, plants with good characters and this is just one of the uh, example as you can see over here uh, in this particular part of the diagram you are seeing a, a normal diploid organisms uh, with small leaves and small fruits and in this particular case uh, on the uh, right side of this image you are going to have these uh, big leaves and this big fruit so what this means is you are converting this from the 2n to the 4n that means you are making a hybrid and the hybrid is going to give you uh, the uh, desired uh, you can say desired traits that you can that you want in a particular plant now by the process of the selective breeding you can make a new variety of the crops and livestock and these new variety of the crops and livestock they have got better yield they have got better resistance to pests and diseases and with improved nutritional value when you talk about the animals or plants now these new varieties they have helped increase the local food production and cut down uh, food imports but why are we doing this selective breeding why we need these uh, bigger animals which can produce a lot of milk which can give you a lot of meat and why are we interested in these uh, plants so that you can get uh, a large amount of the crop the basic theme is because of the increased population to meet the food requirement or the nutritional requirements of an increased population you have to go for the selective breeding so that you can fulfill the food and nutritional requirements of the increased population around the globe now Another important uh, application of genetics is that it's not important in preventing medicine. What I mean by these preventing medicines. Now genetics uh, uh, in many cases it is possible to anticipate the development of a particular disease or other body abnormalities based on a family history. Now if you have a family history of a particular disease appropriate steps that can be taken to prevent the occurrence because when you talk about the genetic diseases they are not curable the things you are doing they are just to minimize the symptom of that particular genetic disease so the best option you have is to prevent the occurrence of a particular genetic disease uh, for example there is a person with a family history of the diabetes he might be prepared for the onset of the disease and take necessary steps and precautions to prevent it from getting worse 
uh, he can consult the doctor uh, he can uh, he can talk about the uh, family history of the diabetes and what the doctors and the nutritional people they can actually help you to get the uh, right uh, quantity the uh, right food so that you can uh, avoid this uh, diabetes or you can uh, at least minimize the chances of the occurrence of the diabetes now the genetics they have also got legal applications uh, for example uh, when you talk about the legal applications one of the important concept is the paternity the identification of the paternity and the paternity actually refers to the fatherhood now what you do is that you can uh, a dna paternity test that actually uses the dna and this dna is usually taken from the cheek swabs to determine whether a man is the child biological father or otherwise so it can actually help identify the biological father of a particular child now why do we need uh, like dna paternity tests there can be a variety of the reasons uh, for example uh, one of the important aspect is to gain uh, legal rights to the child support the child custody the social security benefits and the uh, inheritance secondly uh, you can actually identify the link to the genetic condition that can affect your long-term health so if you do not know about your biological father and if that particular man has got some uh, genetic disorder and that is running throughout their family you may be uh, you can say you may be worry you may worry about the uh, genetic condition that can affect your uh, long-term health secondly uh, the uh, this paternity test can also be performed during pregnancy uh, and what you can do is you can use a variety of the techniques like one of the important technique is the uh, non-invasive uh, prenatal paternity test for short this is known as the uh, nipp and what this test uses is that this test analyzes the fetal dna which is actually found in the pregnant woman blood during the first trimester and you can use this particular dna the information from this particular uh, fetal dna uh, to find out the uh, potential father uh, from the cheek samples of the uh, potential father you can also use the technique of the uh, cvs which is also known as the uh, chronionic wireless uh, sampling and uh, this is actually a small sample of tissue from the placenta is taken and that and that is actually the dna from that particular sample uh, then that is going to be compared with the uh, mother and the potential father dna so you are taking the uh, placenta samples that is going to give you the dna of the fetus and then you are going to compare that with the dna of the mother and the potential father now this uh, cvs it's typically take place between uh, 10 to 13 weeks after a woman last menstrual period but the problem is that this cvs have a slight risk of miscarriage or pregnancy loss uh, another important uh, technique that is available that is the technique of the amniocentesis and during the amniocentesis uh, a needle is actually inserted into the mother abdomen to take out a small amount of the amniotic fluid now the amniotic flu fluid have got the cells of the fetus the dna is extracted from those particular cells and then a lab that compares the uh, dna from the fetus uh, uh, from from the mother and the potential father so again you will be having the dna of the fetus from the uh, cells that you have got from the amniotic fluid and you are going to compare that with the dna of the mother and the potential father now this amniocentesis that actually take place between the fifth and the 20th week of the pregnancy but this test also uh, increases the uh, risk of the uh, miscarriages uh, we will continue the uh, discussion in the uh, next video